Hi, everyone. Nice to see you again. So today we are going to talk about the acquisition by Microsoft of the largest video games independent studio in the world, which is called Activision Blizzard and how competition authorities around the world are moving towards merger control in, relation, in respect of this particular transaction. So I strongly suggest that you also read our thought leadership content on this topic, which is accessible via the store on our website, crefovi.com, and which is accessible via our magasin, so this is the French word for store, on our French language website, crefovi.fr. Okay, so you can subscribe there for uh, a, a, a small sum, an annual sum, and you will get all for leadership emails as well as uh, access to the restricted content of our website, crefovi.com and crefovi.fr, should you decide to uh, become a, um, a subscriber. So, since Microsoft announced its acquisition of Activision Blizzard, the largest independent video games developer and publisher in the world, Competitors and national competition authorities alike have been busy around the world in assessing the potential substantial lessening of competition that such a large deal may, may entail. So let's have a look and assess whether this acquisition is where, where it's at, where, where it, at which stage it is in each country in which the competition authority is investigating its impact on competition in the respective national market. So first and foremost, I suggest that we uh, lay out the scene with respect to the video games industry. So video games and interactive media, though the newest of entertainment genre, generates the largest annual revenue of all entertainment sectors at 180 billion US dollars worldwide per year. This industry's size is greater than that of the movie, the book and the music industries combined. So the video games industry is massive. The term video games is used generically, generically to refer to any interactive software produce, product that is built for the primary purpose of entertaining the person who interacts with that software. This definition does not cover any interactive software used for the primary purpose of gambling. So gambling related software is, uh, although it seems a little bit confusing, referred to as gaming, G-A-M-I-N-G, gaming within that industry. So there's video games where you're not gambling, and then there's gambling uh, through games, and that is called gaming. So here on, the, on, on this uh, live stream, we are focusing essentially on the video games industry sector. Um, this is an industry which is registering a compound annual growth rate of, uh, of, of around 10% from this year up until 2030. So it's dominating. And um, what is interesting is that uh, there are various types of video games uh, you've got, uh, and also they are played from various types of, uh, of um, uh, devices. So you've got video games placed on personal computers, PCs, usually uh, through Windows or OS or operating system, because most um, video games are actually made for the Windows operating system. Then there are consoles, which are manufactured by almost exclusively free competitors, Sony with its PlayStation, Microsoft with Xbox, and Nintendo with its latest console, Nintendo Switch. Then there are certain other games which are played on smartphones and tablets, uh, which are called mobile games. 
and um, they are predominantly uh, downloaded from Apple's Apple Store and Google's Google Play. Then there are some uh, games played on social networks, such as um, Horizon World and uh, Oculus that uh, Facebook has purchased. Um, and um, through that has created a, a metaverse platform and an NFT store and software marketplace. And there are also some new platforms, such as virtual reality platforms, which are technologies meant to provide the user with a virtually rendered three-dimensional world that will track the user's eye orientation and change the visuals accordingly. Uh, such as Oculus uh, from Facebook that I just referred to. And then there is also augmented reality among those new platforms, which are technologies that are capable of layering video game worlds on top of a real world through either the use of smartphones built up built in technologies such as Pokemon Go or of dedicated wearable devices such as Google uh, Glass or Oculus. So, um, Gamers um, access video games three ways. They can purchase the uh, game for a, a set price, and this is called the premium uh, purchase price model. And it's the most traditional business model, and it is still being used uh, very efficiently for, uh, for uh, very large games such as Grand Theft Auto V and Assassin's Creed, some of the most successful franchise, franchises in video games. There are also games which work on a subscription basis, uh, either on a monthly fee plan or an uh, annually fee plan. And um, uh, Blizzard's Entertainment, World of Warcraft, Warcraft is perhaps the most successful game that utilizes this subscription model. And then there are some games which are free to download and to play, but um, you may have a gamer may have to execute some small, tiny microtransactions in order to obtain discrete pieces of content. For example, a player may spend a dollar on a new sw sword for a character or on a vanity item, such as changing the color of a character's hair. Um, and so among those uh, free to play games, there's the very famous League of Legends uh, published by Riot Games. Uh, so, uh, which is given away for free, but then if you want to get a better version of this game or uh, access um, additional layers of this game, you need to uh, you need to buy into it. So, now that we've set the scene in terms of a different kind of games uh, you, you can play and also um, where you can play them, on which device you can play. Now, let's have a look at the microcosm of uh, the uh, the. Uh, the people, the stakeholders involved in the in the um, video games industry. So of course, there are the gamers, so the um, consumers, but there are also developers uh, who develop the games and they do everything from uh, writing the software code to the creation of the characters, of the stories, of the storylines, of the scripts, of the artwork, of the narratives. And they're a bit like um, film producers or, you know, uh, music producers in other entertainment industries. And um, famous developers for the gaming industry are Naughty Dog, Respawn Entertainment and Gearbox Software. If you want to have a look at their websites, you will familiarize yourself with what ga video games developers do. Then there are some publishers. Uh, publishers are responsible for providing games to and operating them to the customers, the gamers. And historically, their responsibilities included funding game development, paying for production of physical discs or cartridges, because back in the day, you actually had to buy a CD-ROM uh, to be able to play a, a game because they were only accessible for the traditional model, the uh, uh, premium uh, uh, game subscription uh, uh, plan, and then you, uh, uh, you actually had to buy the CD-ROM, right? And so also historically, publishers um, distribute the games to retail out outlets, they handle the, re uh, the returns as well as customer support. But today, with the twin advents of digital distribution and uh, live service games, publishers can also provide technology resources such as server infrastructure, cloud server infrastructure, transaction processing. 
and also for prevention and also data, you know, personal data pr 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 processing in, in compliance with the GDPR, the, G G the uh, uh, general data and regulation protection um, re regulations. So also they provide in-game economy management and live game execution, those publishers. So some famous publishers are uh, Activision Blizzard, which I mentioned be earlier because it is the uh, the target of this uh, Microsoft acquisition, but there are also other publishers such as the French company Ubisoft and also the Japanese company Nintendo. Then um, in this microcosm, in this supply chain, you've got the developers, the publishers, but you also have distributors. And what do they do with distributors? Well, they have a role which is similar to publishers in that they are responsible for distributing the games to the end users and processing the financial transactions, but they do not fund a game's development, or usually also they do not engage in marketing and exercise very little control over the game's players or its economy. So the best known game distributors are apps, the App Store, as well as Google Play that I mentioned before, but also Windows 10 Store and Steam, so Steam, S-T-E-A-M. Um, and then the final uh, stake, group of stakeholders in this microcosm of the video games industry are console manufacturers. Okay, as I mentioned before, there are only three of them, with Sony, which has a 43% market share with its... Um, um, console PlayStation. Then you also have Microsoft with the Xbox, which has 20% of the console market, and Nintendo, which has 37% of the uh, of a market. Um, so they these console manufacturers tightly control which games are getting distributed on their respective consoles because they put a lot of obligations in place. Uh, that um, uh, publishers and the developers have to comply with uh, pursuant to the Google, uh, Google uh, console manufacturers requirements. Right, now we have set the scene uh, for this uh, video games industry, which uh, should reach worldwide revenue of 220 billion US dollars by 2024. Happy days. Let's dive into the acquisition of um, Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. So what happened? Well, by way of press release published on uh, the 18th of January 2022, Microsoft disclosed its intention to acquire the largest independent publisher and developer studio in the video games industry, Activision Blizzard. And um, Activision Blizzard was born out of the 2008 merger between Activision and Vivendi Games, which um, owns franchises such as Call of Duty, Diablo, Warcraft, Guitar, Hero, and Candy Crush, and also World of Warcraft. So all these are titles that you may have heard already. And as you can see, it's big business, big money. These are some of the top franchises in the video games industry. Um, in an all cash transaction valued at 68.7 billion US dollars, inclusive of Activision Blizzard's net cash, Microsoft expressed its will to acquire the publisher for $95 per share in this press release. The acquisition would be the largest tech merger in the history of the United States, $69 billion. As set out in this press release, when the acquisition closes, Microsoft will become the world's third largest gaming company by revenue behind Tencent, Chinese company Tencent, and Japanese company Sony. And the acquisition is subject to completion of regulatory review and Activision Blizzard's shareholder approval. So on the 28th of April, 2022, these shareholders from Activision Blizzard did vote overwhelmingly in favor of approving the acquisition, paving the way for the uh, video games industry's largest ever purchase to date. However, for the acquisition to complete, and as mentioned in the uh, press release, by the expected date of June 2023, Microsoft and Activision Blizzard still need regulatory approval in the regions they do business in, including the US, the UK, the European Union, China, um, other, um, other South, Southeast Asia uh, countries, 
and um, New Zealand and Australia. So there are today, as of today's date, nine different national competition authorities which have analyzed or are analyzing this acquisition for merger control clearance purposes. And uh, only one of them has already cleared the merger without any commitments, and that is the Saudi Arabia Competition Authority. All the, all the other eight uh, national competition authorities are in the process of uh, undergoing this uh, merger control clearance process. So the Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA in the UK, is the most advanced of them all, and it moved to phase two of the merger control on the 15th of September 2022 via an in-depth investigation. More on that later. The Consello Administrativo de Defesa Economica in Brazil is currently seeking information and comments on the merger. So at the moment it's at a standstill in Brazil. The European Commission in the EU is still waiting. I mean, it has been seeking during the month of July and during the summer information and comments in particular from competing firms such as Sony and Nintendo, et cetera. And um, in relation to the impact that this acquisition would have on the video games industry. And at the moment, the European Commission is waiting for a European notification filing made by Microsoft for this acquisition. Already some commentators uh, are suggesting that the European Commission should use the theories of harm to assess whether the acquisition complies with EU competition law. More on that later. And then the US Federal Trade Commission uh, is uh, currently seeking data from undertakings in particular with respect to the potential labor impact of the acquisition, especially in the aftermath of a sexual race, uh, harassment lawsuit filed by a state agency, as well as by several female employees against Activision Blizzard, which was described by these um, claimants as a frat boy culture, and which was accusing uh, its leadership of failing to take action. So in the US, they're not too focused on the competition aspects, but they are more focused on the labor law aspects. And then the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission has delayed its um, um, decision to, uh, uh, in relation to the, the merger clearance of this acquisition. The New Zealand Commerce Commission is um, going to take its decision as to whether it's going to go to phase two of the merger control by the 11th of November, 2022. The Japanese Fair Trade Commission is currently seeking information and comments and the South Korean Fair Trade Commission is um, still at uh, phase one of the merger control. So the Competition and Markets Authority from the UK, the CMA, is really at the forefront of this merger control process here. So the CMA has um, started its in-depth phase two investigation on the 15th of September, 2022. And let's take a, a little bit of um, a step back in relation to this UK process, um, competition law-wise. Well. Um, further to the receipt of a merger notice provided by Microsoft and Acquisition Blizzard in relation to the acquisition, the CMA launched a merger inquiry, which is, you know, compliant with the process set out in the UK Enterprise Act 2022, the Act, and um, it also launched the CMA, an invitation for comments on the transaction from any interested party in June, in July 2022. So, in this merger notice, the um, CMA clarified that in its phase one investigation, it will be considering whether it is or may be the case that the acquisition, if carried into effect, would result in the creation of a relevant merger situation and of the merger provisions of, provisions of the Act. And if so, whether the creation of that situation may be expected to result in a substantial lessening of competition with, within any market in the UK for goods and services. Um, in its summary of phase one decision and its press release, which were both published and released on the 1st of September, 2022, the Competitions and Markets Authority of the UK concluded that after ex examining a range of evidence, the acquisition met the threshold for reference to an in-depth phase two investigation 
giving rise to a realistic prospect of a substantial lessening of competition in gaming consoles, multi-game subscription services, and cloud gaming services. In particular, the findings of the phase one investigation were that the acquisition may substantially reduce either current or future potential competition in the console market, where Microsoft is one of the three players with its Xbox, especially in view of the existing strong network effects, i.e. Um, the, the fact of attracting users who want to play high quality games, often with friends, as well as high quality content from game developers who want to make games for consoles with a large user base in this market. Number two, the findings of the phase one investigation were, were that the acquisition may limit access to cloud infrastructure and to an OS license, especially Windows OS operating system, which is the um, operating system for which most PC games are designed anyway, to new entrants in cloud gaming services. So a technology that allows complex games to be accessed on remote servers and streamed directly to a device such as Amazon Luna, Netflix, Google Stadia, Blacknut, NVIDIA, GIF, and Force, and publishers like Ubisoft. So there would be a limit, um, a limited access to cloud infrastructure should this acquisition um, go forward. And then third um, finding from the phase one investigation is that the acquisition may limit the emergence of and access to multi-game subscription services i.e. services which allow gamers to access a catalog of games for a fixed, often monthly, fee by either downloading and playing on consoles, such as Xbox Game Pass or streaming games stored on uh, cloud-based gaming libraries from uh, cloud infrastructure, such as Amazon Luna and Google Stadia to new entrants. So for these three reasons, the substantial re reduction um, uh, and, uh, of current and future potential competition in the console market, the uh, limited access to cloud infrastructure and an operating system license, and the limited emergence of an access to multiple game subscription services, the acquisition is deemed a threat to competition law by the CMA. So, what happened is that the um, CMA gave um, Microsoft a, a sort of um, eight days period during which it um, uh, asked Microsoft to provide some undertakings um, under Section 73 of the Act, which um, would um, basically um, remove all doubts from the CMA that the acquisition would indeed uh, limit competition in the um, uh, console market, in the cloud infrastructure setup, and also in the multi-game subscription services. However, Microsoft and Activision Blizzard decide, decided not to provide any undertakings during this uh, eight days period. So instead, uh, the CMA decided to uh, uh, power on and uh, and move forward with uh, an in-depth phase two investigation of the um, acquisition of the acquisition which started on the 15th of September 2022 as I mentioned before and which should terminate by the cutoff date of the 1st of March 2023 and uh, um, it's interesting to note in relation to this analysis made by the uh, CMA that uh, it's true that uh, Microsoft has an extremely strong gaming ecosystem from the Xbox gaming consoles uh, to um, the, its operating system, Windows OS, which is used most of the time for most games. And also it has this multi-game subscription service, which is called Xbox Game Pass, as well as a premium game store, which is called Xbox Store. And it also has... Um, 24 in its roster, Microsoft has already acquired 24 development studios of games, um, which make some, some top games such as Minecraft, Forza, Elder Scrolls, and Halo for Xbox and other consoles. 
PC and mobile devices. And additionally, Microsoft also has Azure, which is a leading cloud platform that offers a, range, uh, a wide range of cloud computing services to, in particular, the video games industry. So it's true that Microsoft has a massive, a very strong gaming ecosystem already pre-acquisition. And on top of that, um, Activision Blizzard is the largest independent game developer and publisher developing gaming content for consoles, PC and mobiles. And it is the owner of the three most popular franchises, Call of Duty, World of Warcraft and Candy Crush which collectively account for 82% of its net revenues. So already Microsoft is super strong in the game, in the video games industry. Also, also uh, Activision Blizzard is super strong in the publisher and developer um, side of the, of the video games industry. And and over theories of arm, so the theories of arm are the most important ways in which the acquisition could harm competition. So under the theories of arm, Microsoft may withhold or withdraw Activision Blizzard's content, including popular games such as Call of Duty from other consoles, such as uh, Nintendo and, um, and um, uh, the Sony one, or multi-game subscription services, and may leverage its broader ecosystem together with Activision Blizzard's game catalog to strengthen, to strengthen network effects and raising uh, barriers to entry and ultimately foreclose uh, rivals in, in um, cloud gaming services. And uh, there's precedent. Microsoft already did that upon its acquisition of the crea creative studio Besfeba. So what happened there is that um, Microsoft released one of the top title from the Besfeba studio. Um, uh, uh, it, it removed, sorry, these uh, Besfeba games. Um, from other, any other consoles and it made them exclusive to Xbox. So um, I think that really the um, concerns of the uh, UK competition and market authority are definitely uh, well-founded and, um, and um, we'll see what this, uh, what the outcome of this in-depth phase two investigation are. Uh, to conclude, the world-dominant approach of Microsoft in its way of doing business in the video games industry will be tempered by the merger control processes currently being conducted by these various national competition authorities, with the CMA firmly at the forefront of this regulatory exercise. Go Britain, go UK, and their respective outcomes, which may range from full clearance to obligations to provide commitments and undertakings to blocking the merger. At any rate, video games professionals must pay attention to these various national merger controls and the outcome of the acquisition because um, these merger control processes and uh, documents which are going to be uh, published and released in relation to that are going to provide invaluable in-depth information in the structuring and workings of the current video games market and players. So stay tuned. We'll probably give you an update in due course, maybe next year. Um, and thanks for uh, being here with us today for this live webinar. As I said, if you want to uh, have access to the written um, version, which is more in-depth, uh, to this um, Ford Leadership um, uh, update from our law firm, Crifovi, please do uh, register to our subscription plan on uh, the stores of crefovi.com. So you're going to get the content in English and the store of uh, French language website, crefovi.fr. Um, and um, um, yeah, you will get our weekly newsletters and have access to our restricted content on our website. Thank you for now and see you soon. Bye everyone.